The views and opinions expressed during this show do not necessarily reflect like the, the policy, policy or position of any affiliated workplace or employer. The views and opinions of the show do not constitute recommendations for therapy. Please, Please contact, contact a licensed SLP for individual consult on your situation. Please listen carefully. What is communication? An essential behavior of life. We have the both blessing and responsibility of trying to foster another. It's transmitting a thought from one person to another. It's the strongest way for two people to convey information to each other. The back and forth between two people. Communication is a lifeline. Just connection with other people. Connecting people in terms of ideas or thoughts or needs. Draws us out of ourselves, draws us into that relationship, you know, builds up our families. Without it, we'd be lost. Whatever it is that we do to express intent and achieve an impact. Communication is the ability to express your needs, wants, frustrations, and desires to anyone that you feel needs to have that information. Welcome to Speech Science, episode number 141. I'm Matt Hott, a speech and language pathologist in the schools and also in home health care, uh, working with dementia and stroke rehab. Joined, as always, by our executive functioning person, Michael McLeod. What's up, buddy? And our pediatric SLP and research person. I threw that in there, Michelle Winter. Mm, thanks. Hi, Matt. <laughs> Hi. And special co-host, guest co-host this week uh, from LearnWithLess.com and SLP with early intervention, birth to three years old, Ayelet Mar- Marinovich. 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 Oh, I, pra- I get so in my own And head. Matt was practicing say, that before we did. hit record. He so he was, he I was, he was say your first name. <laughs> The impressive, yeah, the impressive burn. part is the is the first name. Right, right. Mar- was, Marinovich is my my Marinovich. married name, so now I get to tell people how to spell or how what, to spell and say both names. What was it before that? Arbuckle. See, which is, you know, I very like that better. Swashbucklery. It sounds better in speech. <laughs> yeah. Arbuckle is an awesome name. <laughs> I feel like both of your last names are amazing. Well, <laughs> Thank you. Oh, now, on I t- have a, now I have a middle name, Arbuckle. On yeah. today's episode, Ayala joins us because we're going to talk about everything that is important that every SLP should be buying, and I put that in quotes, or what do <laughs> new SLPs need, or maybe what they don't need when they enter the field. We've also got our SLP do, uh, SS pod due process, SS pod shout outs. We've got the ASHA spotlight, and of course, we check in with the informed SLP but we want to hear from you. So make sure you head over to our website, speechsciencepodcast.com. Uh, from there, you can give us a phone call, 614-681-1798 or text message. Uh, I had to reset our text message because no one had sent us enough messages that way. But we also have the discord.speechsciencepodcast.com. That's where a lot of cool conversations are happening. Uh, and that's where our due process came from this week. But before we jump into all that, let's check out with everybody around the table. What has been something that you enjoyed this past week? And I yell at you are our guest. So you get to go first. Oh, Unless yeah. you pass, then you can go. No, I'll side. go. Absolutely, I'll go. I have a first grader and a preschooler. And my first grader, who we have been homeschooling since October, went back to in-person school Yay. this week, which was amazing, as did my pre- our preschooler. So it's been a very big transition, very exciting, also very hard, but Aww. mostly exciting. <laughs> what made the choice for you guys to send them back home, back into school? Both my husband and I are vaccinated. We had, Ah, we had said we had made the decision, you know, months ago that like, well, that that's what it would be if we were vaccinated, grandparents in the area are vaccinated and other family members. And we honestly, we didn't think that that would be the case right now. And it is. There you go. um, There you go. Are you team Johnson and Johnson, Pfizer or Moderna? Team Pfizer. Mephi- oh, oh, you got to split one. It's split. I, no, I, I am Pfizer. My oh. husband was. <laughs> I thought you got one of those. Split no, ones. that would be like, weird. That I think that would got be weird. Cocktail. Is that weird? Yeah. No. There's no, uh, some research they're doing right now on yes. it where they're giving doing trials with one of each. I've heard That's you good. could you can yep. get one and then get the other, you know, at <laughs> that, at at a that, time when that is a reasonable thing to do someday. <laughs> Um, that's called so. the Arnold Palmer. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> wow. The Arnold, Arnold Pharma. <laughs> Blended together. Say it. Hey, that's also uh, nice though. You get them out of the house. They get to socialize. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, no, it's that, that part is wonderful. Nice. 
Miss Michelle, what has been something that has been good to you this past week? Uh, speaking of vaccines, I got my second. So the vaccine, getting it, that that part's great. The symptoms afterwards, the side effects, not so great. <laughs> but um, I'm good that now. Because, that was because you had COVID, right? Well, that was my second one, and it hit me even harder. So um, I don't, I don't know. I just know that I felt like I had the flu for a couple of days. But um, anyways, I'm vaccinated fully at this point. Uh, thank you. And then the other thing we're celebrating um is that i got to have coffee this morning with courtney one of our longtime listeners hey. who is the hoh hard of hearing speechy on social media so you can follow oh. her on instagram and she is starting her own podcast but she had written into our show probably three or four years ago now when she was in graduate school and is now a ccc slp practicing herself and it's just so fun when those connections we make through the podcast world or through online world mm -hmm. can actually meet yeah. in person and especially in covid world <laughs> the fact that that happened was really pretty cool so she was in town and we just met up for a, a coffee and got to see each other face to face that's wonderful like, maybe one day i'll meet you face to face i've met <laughs> i've met everyone else yeah. on the podcast right now except you face to face <laughs> yeah you've Even never mike yeah. and i have been doing this for three years you've never seen below my shoulders I yeah know. i know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know if you have legs it's yeah <laughs> maybe i don't Michelle and I know I yell it better in person than we know our own co-host, Mike. This is true. <laughs> when we hung out at Asha. At Asha, Florida. yeah. There you go. Uh, Mike, tell us something that's been fun or cool that happened to you this week. Fun or cool that happened to me this something week. Something you're excited great... about, something you appreciate. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing, uh, I was at a school during Earth Day. Uh, yeah. had, a lot, had a lot of fun doing Earth Day stuff at my school, like outdoor stuff. It's a beautiful day around here, so... I'm a big uh, I'm a big Earth Day guy. Are you really? I I think it's cool. I think it's yeah. a very cool day. I love Earth Day too. Yeah. So uh, there's a song for Earth Day. Did you guys know that? Oh, yeah, there's, dude. there's I'm sure there's many songs. So for I grew, I went to <laughs> every song. Is an Earth I went Day song. to a uh, all male school, all male high school, and uh, Mr. Becker would come in every Earth Day, and he would, and I'm sharing this so you guys can hear the song. He would make us all stand at the table and sing this song every Earth Day. The Earth is our mother. We must take care of her. So, what's the origin of the song? I have no idea, but I was just happy to find it on YouTube and was able to post it in honor of Mr. Becker the other day. I wish Mr. Becker told you about where that came from. I think he did, but I was a 15 year old kid who didn't <laughs> understand. I just knew it was the time to yell and chant, The Earth is our mother. Come on, we Matt, must take you know better her. now. <laughs> well, I do know better now, but like, I don't know. He was also really cool. He would like, before sustained energy was a thing, he built his own cabin with like uh, reclaimed lumber and did solar panels and reclaimed water. Amazing. 20 that years ago, awesome. when everyone thought he was just like, <laughs> Like that none guy. of, none and of that all worked. Like, oh, we should do that. None of that works because our generation pollutes more than any other yeah. generation. He, so. was, uh, he was the local. <laughs> I have to right. give a shout out to my mom because she is, um, I might have mentioned it to you before, but she's an environment, she's a teacher by trade, but for years now, since I was very young, um, has worked for an organization called Project Learning Tree. So, environmental education and uh, is the state coordinator in Ohio for that. So I always joke that she was going green before that was a cool thing, but she's the one who was even, even this Earth Day, as I live states away, is sending me, especially since I have young ones now, sending me ideas and things to do to celebrate Earth Day. That's so, awesome. Uh, so go Sue Wintering, celebrating Earth Day since as long as I can remember. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Uh, now you got me looking up where this song is coming from. Good. Yeah. Um, I think it's important. Right? That song was wild, dude. It's, uh, you're, no, that's, anyway, I'll look that up more. Um, <laughs> Let the us thing know. That, well, no, it was like the history of Mother Earth. <laughs> Addendum. Mother Nature. Um, the thing that happened that I was super excited about today was I took my son's Boy Scout troop down to a tour of the Cincinnati Red Stadium and Museum, and we got to teach about the importance of teamwork. Excellent. So that, that was cool. Awesome. And I'm slipping in something I'm super upset about because y'all need to hear this. Um, okay. Is this the hot, the hot box? The hot, hot, the hot, the hot, the hot topic. Hot box, the hot, the hot box. Topic. 
hot box. So, yes, we need to have a hot box segment. So, like a soapbox? That would be great, <laughs> the hot box. No, so, not like a it. soapbox. The thing is, if you guys, man, I was so serious here, and y'all, oh, it's, it's a Native right. American song. Hey. I, I imagine. Yes. Yeah. That would make sense. Sorry. I hey, hope that it's like actually written by someone who is indigenous to this country and not traditional Native American song performed by Gemini. I don't know who that is, but also there is like a second and a third verse. Didn't cool, know. cool. I'll put that in the show notes. Uh, so the thing that is on my hot topic, um, y'all remember when my daughter was born and a little SLP student told me she failed her hearings test and mm -hmm. then they wrote it in the chart wrong and said she passed it. And then I called the hospital and they were like, oh, we well, won't fix it. And then they sent me a bill. And then I said, no, I'm not going to pay the bill because y'all charted wrong and I need to know what happened before I paid this bill. Long story short, they sent that to collection. And oh, then God. it took me 25 minutes on phone call transfers to get a hold of the right person. And I couldn't tell if they did that to get me so fired up, I hung up in anger yep. or to try to get calmed down. But man, oh man, uh, the nameless person who had to deal with me when I finally got to the right department was a saint. Cause I was like, I am so upset. And she was like, I don't know what happened, but please tell me everything. And Michelle, that screaming child you heard was mine. Um, it's also mine. <laughs> Could have been mine, but, too. And, you know, it's just a chorus. <laughs> we shouldn't have 25 minutes to get a hold of the right person. I'm just saying no. in medical billing. So, I mean, 25 minutes box. sounds pretty, pretty short, actually. Short compared to others. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's aggravating when they're like, please tell us the reason why you called. And I'm like, patient relations. And they're like, I'm sorry, we don't have it. Uh, we don't understand Asians. And I'm like, I hate you. Relations. Zero. Zero. <laughs> Just keep pounding uh, things until you get. Man. Give me the first person who speaks Spanish because they speak English too. Right. <laughs> like, not to like it. But yeah, no. So still dealing with that. But. I just wanted to get that out there into the ether. Mm. They that, was a good, that was a good hot box. They didn't good, believe like me that. when I said that I would Thank talk you, about Mike. it on a radio show. They're like, a great yeah, hot box. you won't. And I was like, I will. But watch me. I will. Uh, we want to hear about your week. Go over to our website, speechsciencepodcast.com and give us a phone call or a, a text message, 614-681-1798. All right, let's jump into our SS Pod shout out. This is our opportunity to recognize someone doing something awesome or something great into the field of communication or speech and language therapy. And Michelle, you have a shout out this week. I do. I wanted to give a shout out to a listener of ours who um, is connected with uh, connected with my one of my college roommates this weekend. Mm. And so I wanted to give her a shout out. Her name is Jen. She is a school based SLP in Cincinnati, Ohio. So right in Matt's neck of the woods. And like many SLPs right now, she's juggling a lot between most of her students being back full time in school, but still a handful of virtual students. So um, way to go, Jen. Hey. We, uh, we feel you and you know mm. we're backing you up on that. So keep doing what you're doing. You're making a difference with all those kids. And hey, Jen. if you've got a person that you want to recognize or a situation, head us up, hashtag SS pod shout out or into the discord, there is a shout outs uh, subgroup. On the flip side, when things go wrong and you want to bring it to the court of public opinion, uh, that is the part of SS Pod due process. And this week, it is an anonymous message that I got from one of our users over on Discord. And they wrote, uh, on a previous episode, you mentioned the diagnostic triangle and not to rely solely on standardized assessment. How do you find enough evidence if your school district wants a standard score showing a deficit and not just informal or anecdotal evidence? So we are the court of public opinion. What are your guys' uh, <laughs> or y'all's initial reaction to that one? You yell, are you laughing at us, Miss Ayala? <laughs> I, I love it. I'm just, I'm laughing because I get to listen to you. I'm not waiting no, on this. Jump in. <laughs> this is why you're here. I know. That's why we want the extra voice because people get to hear our thoughts on it a lot. But let's see. Well, uh, let's, you guys go first. Go. <laughs> I do think there is often an over reliance on standardized testing. Yes. And I had mm -hmm. um, kind of a unique entry doing my CFY at a school for the deaf and the blind because. Mm. 
I, it was, you know, pounded into my head in grad school, standardized testing, you have to have these scores. Uh And then Uh I was tossed into a setting that I ended up, I I sought out and I loved, but there are practically no tests that are truly normed on deaf, blind or deaf, blind populations. There are very, very few. And, um, and that alone had to really challenge me to say, okay, fine. I can use pieces of these tests. I can use parts of these tests. I can pull from this and pull from this and pull from this, but there's no way that I can hold up a picture to a blind student and say, what is this? this? Test their vocabulary (laughs) skill. So, um, it forced me to not rely on that part of the diagnostic triangle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I had to be thrown back the other way when I was in outpatient therapy and billing insurances versus in mm-hmm. the school mm-hmm. of getting used to doing the full standardized test again, because I hadn't given a full one, a complete <laughs> one in years from working at a school where it wasn't normed. And I wrote that caveat at the every, every eval mm-hmm. that said, this is not normed on this population, da, 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 da. And um, so what do we do? I mean, I think we just have to advocate for our field and we have to advocate for our students that there are times when that descriptive information is what's going to make a difference, um, yes. not the standardized score and that you can um, have the standardized score, but can we show through a checklist or through parent report or through observational reports of where their deficits might be, even if it's not a standardized score. And we might have to talk to the bell curve. We might have to talk to the standards in order to convince other people, but we have to be those advocates. But mm-hmm. it gets hard though. I mean, you're sitting at a table. We're, we're one of the team. And realistically, the way an IEP team should work is that we shouldn't be the sole decision maker when it comes to communication. We're the expert. Yeah. But we shouldn't be the sole decision maker. So that's where it gets hard. I mean, I've worked in districts before where the psych and I went round and round because she Mm. would hammer home one and a half standard deviations. And I would come back with all this informal assessment data. And she would be like, nope, she's the students less than one and a half standard deviations away. Um, So the way I learned to get around it is that I'm sure that we're all in the same category we all know the tests that maybe are a little bit more difficult for some of mm-hmm. our kids mm-hmm. yeah i hate to and, say that but like mm-hmm. you end up having to shop the test to yeah. like show a deficit this test they're two and a half standard deviations below Sorry. right right mm-hmm. i love i love what you said michelle about utilizing all of the tools at, at hand, right? I started my career as an AAC specialist and I worked a whole lot with <laughs> kids with complex communication needs, kids who were deaf, blind, nonverbal, kids with aut- kid, autistic children who were nonverbal. I mean, so, so many t- different issues, right? And, um, and so you take a, you take a communication sample, not a language sample, right? Uh-huh, but a communication uh-huh. sample, looking at all of the different means and functions of communication. You look at um, what they can do on a you know receptive one word vocabulary test or expressive one word. You look at how they utilize pictures in the environment. Um, how many in a field of X can they identify? Whatever it is, and you come up with a picture and doing all of those things, you can, wow, get, you know, write up an entire report and get funding for a speech generating device, which is durable medical equipment and get insurance to pay for it. Right. I mean, and that's not using any standardized test, or at least that is like you said, Michelle, like standardized on this specific population or that's the most wild like thing. that, you know, and it's amazing and it's so important. And that's why you need, we all need way more training on AAC Mm -hmm. and assistive technology and so many more things and cultural (laughs) and linguistic competence and right. Blah, blah, blah. And, and, and and, yeah. Right. (laughs) I mean, there's so much that, that we need as SLPs, as far as our training and there's, well, you just said something that's cr- that's wild to me. The is oh, that, blah? <laughs> no, 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 no. Is the fact that, you, and, and I know you're 100% right because I've done it yeah. where you can use yeah. informal assessments yes. and anecdotal observational data to prove to an insurance company who mm-hmm. we know not going to get money very easily to anybody, right. 
to right. pay for a twenty-four thousand dollar small eye vehicle, aka device. known yes. as an eye gaze. Right. However, in the schools, and we've I in my position in Ohio, I've heard all the horror stories that in that 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 informal assessment data just goes out the window. Well, that because device it's not then standard. then gets to be utilized, right? I mean, it's the school district for in right. in my case, right, it was right, a school right. district that was paying for an AAC specialist to come in, do the assessment, procure a device through medical insurance, and then work with the family and the district and all of the personnel on an IEP team mm -hmm. to bring everything together, right? So, but again, you're not as the communicator communication specialist uh, it's always quote unquote right right you are the person i mean i i was literally a cfy i was in my <laughs> first year <laughs> and i had the like school-based slp like you're the <laughs> you're the aac specialist what do you think about blank and i was like i'm not telling her this is my <laughs> first week on the job right but I also like, I, I did know more about AAC than mm -hmm. she did. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I did know more about this particular because, because I did my externship in this area or whatever, like, because this was anyway, we could go way off topic, but <laughs> no, that's what the, this is the best part it's about the super new process, interesting. I, yeah, I know. Good. Yeah. But you're Mike, right. Anything? I mean, that's the beauty is it's, it's, you go, you go in, you have a conversation, you keep it going. You, you have to, you have, my point was that yes, <laughs> you have, you have the, the insurance, to, insurance company, which like that is a feat in into itself. And then mm -hmm. you have the, the school district, right. Who's that in my case was actually footing the bill for oh. continuous services for this child, right. Consult consultative services, two hours a week or whatever it was. Right. Um, where we were doing a push in model and working with a family and working with the teacher and working with the student and making sure that everybody was using the SGD or the um, low tech device or system that was happening and that whether they were in a self contained classroom, whether they were being, it, whether it was an inclusive classroom, all of the all of the possibilities yeah <laughs> and i would also add like all of this over standardized testing yeah mm -hmm. like i've seen it really have a negative impact on the parents and the families as well because yeah. these parents now are obsessed with testing and yes. obsessed with scores yeah. and obsessed with with standardized with uh with standard deviations and all these things mm -hmm. oh give my son this test give my son that test it's ridiculous and you know the being an executive function specialist, I have a very negative view on standardized testing because there will never be a standardized test for executive functioning. You can't do it. You can't measure your imagination. You can't measure your internal yeah. language. So there's the, that's pretty basically how I feel. And Matt touched on it, basically saying, you know, some tests are harder than others. Well, some tests are easy for some kids. Some mm -hmm. tests are harder for some kids. It's it's totally, you know, there's there's never going to be a perfect test for anything, especially language. Uh, so you know, can we laugh uh, at the standardized assessment for pragmatic language? I'm sorry. Yeah, like, exactly. Like. And it, it's it's really you know it's parental concern, teacher concern, informal observation. This is really what should be driving a lot of uh, a lot of what's happening, uh, and all of this standardized testing. You know, we have this training, and we went into this career field for a choice to work with kids because we understand kids and we want to make a career out of it. Mm -hmm. Parents who don't have the training on how to work with kids, mm -hmm. they basically just follow the information they're given, and what they're given is your kid scored this, your kid scored that. So their response is, okay, what test was that? Give them this, give them this test. Yeah. What's this test? And parents care, like parents are getting obsessed now with standardized scores. And that's not really what we, where we want parents to be. We want them to see their kids as unique individuals mm -hmm. that are strong in some areas and have other areas of need, just like every kid does. But the more we push the, like these- all of us do. Exactly. Yes. So, so right. the, more, the more we push these tests, the more pressure we're putting on parents as well. Was it in yeah. your page or was it another page where I saw the parent of a special needs student 
No, it was a TikTok. That's what it was. Was a parent of a special needs student like put every therapist on blast and just said, I know. Well, and it was a really interesting TikTok. It was like, I know that you have to write in this IEP document about what my co- my child cannot do. Yeah. But could you also maybe include just an email that says all the stuff that you think that they do well? That I, should be included I, in the evaluation, right? I didn't yeah. want to put that in the TikTok comments and be like, your therapist should be adding that. But you're right. That like, mm-hmm. I've always this was- student mm-hmm. is these are the strengths, and also these are the areas of need. Hello, come on. If I say shit sandwich, do you guys understand what I mean? Yes. <laughs> So it was something that we learned in radio where like when I was learning to train DJs, you put in the thing that they're doing really well, the thing that they need to improve on, and then the thing that you really liked about them. Mm -hmm. So I try to do that when I do my IEP profiles. It's like uh, the thing that they do really well, this student produces initial R at 90% and has really improved. However, their vocalic R is needs improvement shit but, that's the shit i was not gonna yeah. and, then, <laughs> and then the thing that i like about them i'll put in like the hey this student comes to, to therapy five minutes early every week and asks for extra homework or talks nonstop to me about Fortnite or a well, video game like I, I think it's our equivalent of bedside manner yeah that's true mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. it is we can get into our flow into our normal yeah. And seeing kids with these deficits or these challenges mm-hmm. or these areas of growth, whatever term you're going to use, mm-hmm. we need to be careful with our language when we're explaining things to people. Mm-hmm. But we also don't want to over sugarcoat things and not tell them what their True. child needs or the patient needs, right? And yeah. so I feel like as professionals, we can just get, we get so used to this terminology yes, that we use it casually because we understand it and we know that what the percentile ranks mean and what the age equivalents mean and what whatever it is that we're explaining means. Yes. And often, and me as a parent, I've even done it already at medical appointments for my children. Of uh, I tune out as soon as I hear that uh-huh. one thing that I'm like, wait, what did you say? Yep. And mm-hmm. so now I'm brooding on that because I heard mm-hmm. this one negative thing mm-hmm. that I'm not even listening if you said something positive about my kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I just, I need to remember that of, mm-hmm if I'm getting kind of tunnel visioned in what I'm used to doing, because I did five evals that week or that day, depending what setting you're in, then, um, you know, what is my, my SLP bedside manner looking Mm. like? Am I supporting these parents? Mm -hmm. Because so important. Oh my gosh. (laughs) We all know that medical provider that you've been to that, that you're like, wow, like they're great at what they do, but their bedside manner could use some help. Mostly (laughs) surgeons, not all mostly Mm. surgeons. No, I think SLPs have, I, I mean, I'm in oh, yeah. my all time favorite, you know, like Facebook mom group that I'm in ha- recently had a, a post about like specifically about like my child, like yeah. delayed speech yeah. and yeah. we recently got a referral and SLP said X, Y, and Z. And I don't really like what I'm hearing. And like five different people tagged me in and were like, Hello, what do you think? And I was like, no. No, not not my what is it? No, not no. my pig. I said, not my no, farm. like this is not what you're supposed to be meant to feel. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh that. Right? Yeah. No, you should not be feeling that. This mm-hmm. SLP is not doing their job. Mm-hmm. Especially because especially because my ex- expertise is early intervention, birth to three. Like this was a child who's like, you know, two, three years old, like. This, the entire job of the SLP is to build family capacity. Mm -hmm. You're, you're clearly this person is failing at that job. Do not pass, go find someone else. (laughs) Yeah. And I think that goes back to what we, we touched on a little bit last week, where we were talking about the importance of, of, of tracks and maybe making a longer program that we have the ability to Mm -hmm. learn. and, And maybe we didn't put it in that clear of terms, learning bedside manner, learning how to interact mm-hmm. with people that are not us. Yep. Like, oh, yeah, 
<laughs> I like, mean, I'll be honest. On. There's I so a... much there, right, Matt? Like, <laughs> right. as far as like cultural and linguistic competence in this field, like, geez, there's so much there. I always loved, and it's the person that we quote at the end of the show uh, for our, our Be a Willow. And I don't know if you remember this, Michelle, but someone had brought up about using African American norms or whatever on one of the tests. And she said, well, where are the white Caucasian Appalachian norms? Mm -hmm. And it was yeah, like, because we went to school in, in, like, in Appalachia, Appalachia yeah. and it was like, yeah. oh, but those aren't on there. Mm -hmm. Huh. And it was like that question where you're like, huh, maybe I should learn more about what I'm doing before yeah. I go and do it. But I mean, yeah, you're right. It's a bedside manner thing too. Mm -hmm. So much. So that is our SS pod due process going back. Uh, if, if you have something that you want to bring to the court of public opinion, make sure you hit us up hashtag SS pod due process or on the discord discord dot speech science podcast, uh, dot com. You can put that out there. If you want to be, uh, have your screen name, I guess, linked to that. One. This one was a anonymous message. So. Yeah. So you were talking surgeons as being the stereotype for not having the best bedside manner. Um, I just have to throw out because I'm sure that there's listeners here who've been through a C-section like I did for my firstborn <laughs> and, um, he did a great job, the doctor, but I was awake, mind you, most people are awake during C-sections. You're just numb from the waist right, down. Right, right. And, um, he, when he delivered my son, I didn't exist to him. I mean, he was right. talking mm -hmm. about his 4th of July plans and oh my, my son was born on the 4th of July, you know, after a oh. labor. Oh and gosh. I just remember knowing if I had to, I didn't have to have a C-section this time around, thankfully, but um, wow. that I just was like, man, I, I know that surgeons have the stereotype, but you're working on an awake patient. So I feel like mm -hmm. this, this shouldn't apply to you. You need to work on this dude. <laughs> I wish, I wish you, don't you wish you'd had the wherewithal at the moment to be like, yeah. hello, I this know. is if not I had, about 4th of July. I'm here. Yeah. If There's I had been with baby. it enough, like with it enough, I would have been like, yo, awake, <laughs> hi, like, but I was not in good shape. So of I course. wasn't, but, um, but I mean, if it was a scheduled one or something, I feel like I would have been like, yo, don't forget me, dude. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I, all I can say is that my daughter's surgeon, uh, he is awesome. So he's actually got a really cool bedside personality. But Good. it also could be that he works with children all day and specializes in deaf and hard of hearing kiddos or kids. So, oh. I mean, he loves what he does. And then he uh, laughed at us because he gave our daughter a stick, like one of the tongue depressors, just to see how she was interacting. And mm -hmm. then when she refused to give it up and every time he took it, she screamed in complete anger at him. He was like, yeah. I'll let mom and dad handle this one. I'm like, you gave her a <laughs> stick. You started this. Speaking Don't you of, know that's the best toy ever? And that it is the best transition <laughs> ever. Best Speaking transition. of <laughs> the best tools or toys or whatnot. And I figured this would be a great topic here at the end of April going into May. We've got brand new grad students. We've got speech uh, speech therapy budgets that need to be used before summer break we've got private practices that are ramping up for summer i thought this would be a wonderful time and i yell it this is honestly the reason i wanted you on here we had talked about it before on facebook messenger uh if you want just kind of give a brief what is learnwithless.com and then that'll help us talk about why we need the most expensive stuff or should we be giving the kids sticks to beat each other with well, learn with less. Yes. So <laughs> sticks to beat each other. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of things you can do with There's this. a lot of things I in mean, between. I do have a four and seven year old. I do know the re the reality. <laughs> and <laughs> over at Learn with Less, I help uh, new families feel confident that they can feel that they can. I help new families feel confident that they can support and connect with their babies and toddlers without having to buy a single toy, right? And I also train uh, educators and therapists to utilize the Learn With Less curriculum in a caregiver and me format in their communities. So um, yeah, I I mean, I am not anti-toy as I think right, I you know. and I discussed <laughs> Matt in a in a past episode. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I certainly we certainly have toys. Um and 
we all know that the definition of a toy is usually something that that a grown up defines, right? Oh. Um, and it's it's an interesting thing, right? Because a toy is what you purchase at a toy store. And mm -hmm. yet, if you ask a toddler or even a preschooler what wh to distinguish between the salad spinner and the, you know, whatever, <laughs> which, which one is, is more fun? It, I mean, it's arguable, right? Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. The stick or the salad spinner or the I pushing toy. I loved how you said the toy is what we defined it as. I don't it know why totally I've never is. even thought about that as my wall of toys is sitting <laughs> behind me. Um, but no, I thought this would be a great topic to come up with. I had to spend my speech budget and mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. I had you in the back of my brain as I was spending my monies on my speech budget. And I think I ended up picking up a bunch of like crank toys for, for AAC. Uh, <laughs> I picked up a walk book so that I could reproduce things. And uh, I bought a, like a, just a verb book, like uh -huh. a, a sentence builder book. And that was it. I really wanted to buy a whole yeah. bunch of other stuff. And then I kept looking at it and going, I don't know if I could justify this outside of like one student. And then I had you in the back of my mind, mm -hmm. but honored. <laughs> right. So with that kind of as our background, I wanted yes. to have this fun talk about if you were a, before we get into the seasoned SLP, let's yeah. look at that brand new SLP. What would each of y'all suggest to that yeah. brand new SLP uh, to purchase that would be useful? So whoever would like to go first. A great question. I, it really totally depends on what population they're working with. Mm -hmm. uh, Pretend whatever, going into the <laughs> schools, going to the adults. What would you suggest to a new SLP? Probably just to sub subscribe to speech science. That's probably <laughs> Mike. That's probably it, right? They're already listening. All right. Oh, good point. Good point. You're right. Uh, you know, and learn with less. You definitely <laughs> and obviously <laughs> yes. buy my books. Well, yeah. it's in it's incredibly helpful to have a, a teachers pay teachers account, even just to have free, yeah. just to, just to mm -hmm. get the free stuff off of there is very sure. very very helpful. Uh, but again, like that's that like that stuff gets very overwhelming. I mean, I will does, say yes. I, I am still going through and I, I I'm like regretting and daunted by the day that I have to really organize my digital footprint. Mm. How do you my, purge like, anything? Oh, my gosh. Like it is. I have j finally purged my uh, my actual home office. But my God, like the digital stuff that I've downloaded, like. That's just a nightmare. <laughs> you yeah. purge it when your computer dies. <laughs> yeah, right? My computer's going to be like, ah, what do I do now? Um, <laughs> when you're forced to. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're talking about but your digital footprint. <laughs> these are just my digital everything. That's way, I, Matt's showing his like- You're much pretty, more organized. His pretty little <laughs> folders oh, no, and no, mine are like- These are not, these are not organized. These are just random yeah, but you have things. Like, 25 that aren't organized none <laughs> yeah but look if i click on this these are my rating scales and it's way too many pages of rating scales i can't even you're showing it. off so Matt. you're showing off Matt. i know come on i'm not meaning to i'm eating oh, i have 58 pages of rating scales i do not use any more than two of them um so know. let's go back to the uh the sorry there's a couple, of, there's a couple of students you've, there's a couple of students you've rated 58 times let's be honest <laughs> Um, I would say some of my favorite things, if you're talking pediatrics of all ages are various containers, but they can be yes. whatever things you have or things you might acquire or hand me downs, but, um, containers, I love containers, yes. um, and open-ended toys, the classic stuff that's going to last mm -hmm. forever blocks and, um, you know, stacking rings and, um, mm -hmm. things that you can you know, build and do cause and effect with and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and always ask, especially new SLPs, ask your friends or your parents, because if they don't have a, almost everyone in their basement or in their attic has, you know, that box of old board games and stuff, and you can use so many of those. So I've uh, stolen so I, many trivial pursuit yes. cards for dementia and, and cognition yes. rehab with adults. Yeah. The Uno sets, th those don't matter if some of them are missing. 
<laughs> you know, get that from your parents' house if no one's playing Uno there anymore. And, um, and you can use that with, um, with adult patients, with teens, mm-hmm. with kids, with colors, with young kids. So um, yeah, I would highly recommend asking some of the, the people around you what they have that they want to purge because you could mm-hmm. build your supply closet really quickly with that. Yeah. One of the things I like um, is, and, and I don't know if y'all have boughten, boughten, bought, bought, have bought, bought, have bought the <laughs> quote unquote like cognition cards from super or from any of the companies. And you go through the questions, and some of them are fine. Some of them are like, what are the top six uh, celebrated places you've ever visited? You know, they're they're made to get our patients working. But mm. those que- those cards have such a high start price that it's almost impossible oh, yeah. to get anybody to like outside of a therapist. I have found that if I go down the toy aisle at Kroger and they'll run card sales on their like loaded questions or the vocab stuff, they are almost the exact same style of question hmm. cards for yeah, a third of the price. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah. I don't know those ones. But and here's the best part. When I'm talking to a patient or a family and they're like, what is something that I can do with my mom, dad, grandma, grandpa? Mm. And I go, hey, there's a game that I'm using. It's called Joe Name It. You can order it off of Amazon. And it's the same. I mean, it's a much more fun version than what I'm doing. <laughs> but it's, well, because it's like name six yeah. famous Joes. And I'm like, I'm not going to do that in therapy. But it's very similar to the, Hey, name six things that you need to buy at the grocery store if you're making soup. Mm-hmm. Like it gives them that same task, but they can now play it with their family members. I love those cognition games from Kroger's or Wegmans or whatever your grocery store of choice is mm-hmm. when they run them on Clarence. But I know they're games and they're not. I mean, it's funny, right? Because I feel like you could probably make all of those games with like pictures with a magazine. You could, you could. (laughs) That's why we have you here. (laughs) 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 The problem is, and and, and I don't know, maybe this is my mentality. Having done that for 10 years or like eight years now with home health care, I've run out of questions. So I use my my question cards almost as a uh, conversation therapy starter that then i can go yeah. oh let's talk about this and mm-hmm. pull stuff up on my ipad I it's a little mental use, outsourcing we I don't need have that. to use the analog style <laughs> yeah. of magazines anymore i can use yeah. digital ipads sure sure <laughs> i will say though that like you can be intentional with like the That's images true. that you've pulled from like mm-hmm. you know whether it's better home and garden or like your local nickel and dime store whatever it's called dime I will it? only Woolworths. say better home and garden that way from here. Yeah, metal, <laughs> better better home, home and garden. And garden. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, and even like, because number one, like you get, you can find all kinds of bizarre photos mm-hmm. that are, that are similar to the like strange speech, language, right. like the weird prompts that you find in those cards. And you're like, what is this image of a refrigerator with a mouse inside? Like what's going on here? Why is there, what is happening? And like, if you pull from, I don't know, five, six, seven uh, magazines, you can piece together Mm -hmm. way more diversity of people in age, race, race, ethnicity, whatever, Mm -hmm. like every different thing than you would be able to in one deck oh, from true, your true, local grocery true. store. Oh. I mean, let's be real, right? No, you're right. <laughs> You'll be able to like actually represent people. <laughs> hey, I've had to do, okay. So some of my patients are out in the middle of nowhere and we've done therapy using their, I hate to say it, their NRA book magazine. You could do whatever and you want. Exactly. Talking about it. And I'm like, hey. I don't know what I'm doing, but I used to sell guns 20 years ago. So I can right. kind of make it up. Yeah. <laughs> but, that's accessible to them, so but to them, it's functional. It's important to them. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Now, Mike, question for you, because you work with a lot of teenagers, mm-hmm. right? Mm. And uh, executive functioning, obviously. Uh, what are your like go-to items that say somebody's going to work with teenagers or executive <laughs> functioning? 
That's a great question. Uh, so the, one of the number one things to ha- to always have is just a plain old whiteboard. You know, when you're working with a lot of these kids with uh, incredibly high levels of intellect, uh, so with ADHD and executive functioning tends to come a high IQ. So just having a basic whiteboard where you can, you know, draw things out, have the student draw things out is huge. Uh, another good thing to always have is a laptop because these kids are so highly motivated by tech. Uh, to have a laptop be, to be able to pull up YouTube or any sort of website they're into, whether it's Minecraft, Roblox, whatever, just to sort of have and to get them engaged and get them motivated and to elicit language is huge. Um, but there's 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 a lot. It really depends on exactly what they're dealing with. Um, when you're working with executive functioning, you tend to to be working on academic executive functioning. So you need to have that laptop there for them to pull up their Google Classroom or, uh, or, you know, power school, whatever it may be. Uh, But yeah, those are, those are my two go-to things is you, you want to have like in my clinic, I have like a, a TV on the wall that I can hook a computer up to and you can go to websites and go to YouTube and things like that. So you want to have tech, you want to have some good high tech stuff and you want to be as basic as possible with, I love with a whiteboard. That duality. The internet mm-hmm. and the whiteboard. <laughs> and the whiteboard. The that's right. Simple or as that. The yeah, stick in the paper, dirt. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's how we that's how hey, we get things done. Stick, I just thought of this from a walk <laughs> with my you know almost three-year-old son yeah. a couple of days ago. And uh, my husband calls it the distractathon when you walk with small children, but it's also mm-hmm. like as a speech therapist, as long as I'm not in a hurry somewhere, I adore yeah. it. <laughs> like, right. because well, And you know, uh, you know, that that is the learning that you're doing that day. Right? Yeah, exactly. But, um, but it is entertaining for both yeah. of us to just see like, what does he discover today? And the stick sticks was the thing on the walk a couple of days ago. And he had, he called them his tools. And they were like, he picked up some mulch pieces and he was <laughs> fixing parts of the sidewalk <laughs> along the way. Thank and he goodness. had particular sticks that he said was like, this is my hammer or this is my tool. And he would sit there for 10 or 20 seconds and just tap, tap, tap on the sidewalk. And then we'd be like, all right, let's go fix something else to keep it moving. <laughs> and to get him to go further, we'd be like, all the way to the stop sign. There's something to fix. Keep going. <laughs> so great. But yeah, the use of a stick or five little sticks yeah. that become your tools for the day. Oh, yeah. I and, need- hey, five sticks and a container. I mean, my God. Mm-hmm. Man, you're sold. Toolbox. That's a I mean, whole day. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to introduce you guys to something. And the website is theory11.com. Michelle and I have talked about at, at Ohio University, we were told that we should be able to do therapy with just a deck of cards. You should be able to do yeah. 45 minutes with just a deck of cards. And uh, these playing cards, they're not sponsors. I just love them to death. And I'm going to show you guys. I feel like I need to say that. Uh, y'all check out these playing cards. So okay, this is the Star Wars. Theory 11. Theory 11.com. So these are the Star Wars cards. Oh, wow. And uh, so they look like that. So there again, we're talking about language. We're talking about playing games. We're talking about math. Are you going to link with, to these? I will put a link to these, Definitely. but they also and they're, have- They're a normal deck of cards. A normal but deck of cards. like interesting- mm-hmm. um, Here is the Infinity Saga for the Marvel, if you oh. got- Ooh. And they are, so example, the king is Iron Man. The, another king is Captain America or oh. uh, T'Challa. <gasps> Black Panther, yeah. Right? Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, if you are a James Bond person, (laughs) here, take a look. Wow. Yeah. So it's just a gorgeous set of cards. They're only like 10 bucks a deck, which is a little bit more. But again, when we talk about being able to just minimize what we're doing, I I mean, think of how much you can do with a deck of cards, Mm -hmm. right? At any age. All right. So let's start with like infants and toddlers. All right. Infants, like, all right. What can you do with a baby who's like staring up at, you know, your activity gym, right? Yeah. You've got the black and white. Guess what? A playing (laughs) card is a high contrast black Mm -hmm. and white image, right? Like. Ta-da. I that don't know. I work with middle school kids, guys. Um, <laughs> you have little tiny babies in your house. <laughs> I don't play cards with them. 
you play we, games we with them, at, you yeah, help them with tummy time, them. you <laughs> feed them. We stare at each other until mm-hmm. one of us screams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that too. Sorry. That's keep true. going. I didn't mean to I didn't mean to interrupt. But yes, you're right. That's all. I mean, what else? All right. So you you put them on an act you like tape them onto an activity gym. You you then when they get older, you like put them, you stack them up, 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 on top, on top, on top. Or you make a little tunnel to send a ball through or whatever, like a cotton ball or my seven year old and I are trying to play uh um what is it called? Like card castles. Yeah. Ooh. I mean that's fancy. Or house of cards, house of cards. Like where you I go like to card mark. castles. That's what I want to call it. Yeah, I'm going to call it now that after my aphasia moment, we're going to call it card castles. <laughs> You're, you can sort the colors, black mm-hmm. and red. Uh, you know, if you really want to get into numbers, you can go well, up. That's what I do with my adult patients. We I call yeah. it the mm-hmm. rapid naming. We'll go yeah. 10 cards, tell me black or red. We'll flip through that. Then 10 cards, tell me the suit. Mm-hmm. so then it's a little bit you know now there's only four choices and then 10 cards of tell me the number so now there's only 10 choices that they can pick through and then the last round it's tell me color suit and number so it's a red 10 of hearts mm, and i'm saving that that's a good one Matt. i that's love it one. because it's a nice rapid thing the patient feels very at ease because they feel like it's a very easy task and that's then something they, they're likely at least basically familiar with <laughs> But as we go on, all of a sudden their brain goes, oh, now I got to choose between two tasks, mm-hmm. four choices, 10 choices. Oh, now I got to combine them. And I'm not flipping. I'm just using the same 10 cards, like boom, 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 boom. Yeah. I love cards, man. I mean, think about how many fun stories can be told with the with the Jack and the Queen. Yes. To, with the toddler. That's true. Hello, and, how's it going? And if you have the Mandalorian mm-hmm. cards, you could have Baby Yoda or Grogu that's on one true. of your cards i'm just saying that's true sorry i love these cards. how fun I mean, would that be Grogu. <laughs> oh any other thing now okay i yell it so you <laughs> you talk about learn with less and yeah. how do we change that mindset then for the i'm a 10-year vet oh my gosh i've been in the field for 10 years or yeah. just shy of 10 years yeah my therapy room we, and we kind of joke about how much stuff we have my, my colleagues have nicknamed my room the speech palace because it's a old classroom, but right. it's also the storage room for every speech therapy material of the last 30 years. I've got Legos, I've got potato heads, I've got nine versions of our tick cards. How do we change that mindset for those of us that have money to spend for the next year, for our summer practice, for our home health care? that I'm not carrying around a 50 pound bag. Yeah. I mean, I mean, are we talking about what age group are carrying around? So for my home health, I mean, home health, I've got. All right. So number one, if you're, if you're working with a, with, within regard, I mean, okay. What's, what's the goal of therapy, Matt? (laughs) I mean, every patient's different. Right. But what's the goal? If you're going oh, into the home, to improve home, quality of life. Goal? Yeah, thank you. Sorry. To improve Say quality of life. Improve quality of life. Yeah. I don't like this. I don't like being on the. <laughs> Come on, Matt. Go also, for I it. Also, I don't know why my face is all dark, but yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, you're going into the home. You're dealing with pediatric patients, so you're you're improving quality of life for for the child and for the whole family, right? Right. Right. So you want to increase that family's confidence increase their ability to feel competent as as a family and essentially increase family capacity right right so you want if you're the fam if you're the therapist who's walking into that home with a giant bag full of stuff and then you walk right back out of that home with that giant bag of stuff Mm. how are you going to do that good point i mean really how are you going to do that what are you doing with that family that can help them do the same thing with the same stuff every single moment that you're not there with their child? That's what it comes down to, right? How, it doesn't matter if that child is 18 months or 15 years old. You ha- your, our job as, as providers is to help the whole family 
to see what they can do for their oh no oh no yeah no i was shaking my head yes yep (laughs) sorry you were preaching i just was like oh my gosh i gotta (laughs) you disappeared it's okay you're back (laughs) <laughs> on my computer oh <laughs> mike's, mike's here mike's, mike's here mike's like it's cool <laughs> no i that's a great I, that's a great right point. i mean, I mean <laughs> this is what we say in earlier intervention all the time mm-hmm. but it's not it doesn't stop at three <laughs> like, yeah. it's, no that's, that's a great point though you bring up a great point i think that like even in adult world we get and so home yes. home too i yes. i'm i'm with you so much on that we get so health, lost especially <laughs> We get so lost because our life is, is so stressed. Yeah. So we try to overcomplicate it by buying something simple. And, and what, I don't, I, mean, I don't Mike want my was saying, go ahead. Michelle, no, no. I, I just agree with you on that because, <laughs> uh, I don't want my families when I've done adult home health or little kids home health, I don't want them to think they need mm-hmm. whatever I brought in. Exactly. And and that's happened where they've said, oh, I need to go buy this because it works. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, if, if, if you decide something is engaging for your kid and you, and you want to purchase mm-hmm. that, awesome. But I don't want you to feel like you have to right. in order to help your child. So, Which is why showing them how, like, what was it about that thing that we did today mm-hmm. that was engaging? Mm-hmm. And if you start out with like a cause and effect toy, great. If it's, if it's something that they already have in their home. But if you start out with the fact that like, it's a salad spinner, <laughs> which you True. just press the button and stop and press it, then that might even inspire them to be like, what else do I have in my kitchen that is actually applicable for my child's learning, right? Mm-hmm. And like Mike said something earlier about parents and caregivers really get caught up in like, the idea of like, what standardized test is it that I should be using with my child? What do I need to do? Right. And this is, I mean, it it goes for testing. It goes for new parents and caregivers. It goes for parents of school age kids, right? We ask ourselves as parents, what do I need to do to be the best parent for my child? Right? Like that's what every parent wants. It doesn't freaking matter. Like where you're from, what languages you speak, whatever. Like that's what every single parent wants. I want to be the best parent to my child. And if we can show that parent something that fits into their priorities, their culture, their moments, their everything, what they already have, that, that is the best material. (laughs) So come on right? Like, is it what's in the bag or is it actually the bag? <laughs> See, is this it... is why I wanted you on for this. This is one, <laughs> this is the stuff that we should be doing or learning. It's so, from, it's say. so important, right? So like for me, if I were to, to, con- to want to convince somebody to like buy something, it would be probably like a gift certificate to home goods, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Target, <laughs> um, because there you have like stuff from the container store, stuff from, you know, or or like, uh, you know, go to your local garage sale. What do I have in my whole area? I have zippers from a craft store. I have a whole box full of containers, like Michelle was saying. I have looking. I have a whole <laughs> bin full of different kinds of tape, right? Right. Washi tape, duct have, tape, stickers. You say, that, you say that, and I don't mean to interrupt. I have a, I have a, a, a person that I am working with, and we work for a piece of duct tape. Yeah. And at first I was like, this is the, don't you want to paint or no. Legos or potato head or no. move? And then- I learned, like, I got down on their level of what we're That's doing. That's what you want to do. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> and it was like, honestly, it's more fun watching. And then they'll make animals out of their tape. I'll make animals out of my tape. Like, it took me, I'm not going to lie, it took about a month's worth, four sessions, like, before I had to, like, figure out like oh no the motivator is the thing that the person has in their hand that they're looking at and not paying attention to my motivators it was yeah i mean even when i have like the one-off like arctic therapy Mm -hmm. 
uh, private practice client every once in a while. It's mostly like the, what are they called? The like fun little shapes of different colors that are like, they all fit together in the geometric pattern. They're like Montessori type tiles. Oh, magnet. No, they're not magnet. Are they like oh. almost look like stained glass pieces of plastic? Kind of. Yeah. They like all, yeah. there's like the long skinny one that's like mm -hmm. tan. And then there's the diamond one that's blue and Oh, they're like the pieces of a standardized test where they make you put them together. Yeah, right? they're like yeah. geometric shapes. Yeah. And like, yeah. that's often the like, yeah. you, you say five words and then you get another piece. And mm -hmm. like, that's what we're working, right? Like, I mean, those are the thing. I don't use therapy materials. I just use like whatever my ki my kids are playing with or like whatever, whatever I happen to have on hand. I just think personally, I spent the first few years of my budget and this, and this, here's the real, here's the real, the real story, right? Like you spend the first few years out of grad school spending money on mm -hmm. stuff on teachers, pay teachers or stuff that like the, the like SLP Instagram influencer was like, Oh my God, this was like the most amazing therapy material. And you're like, I have to have Bonyard bingo. And you're like, I got it on eBay for $50 or like, whatever that game is that everyone Barnyard is bingo. I have it still. I like can't bear to part with it. Cause I, I like saved for it as a new grad. I mean, it's really ridiculous. <laughs> When really I should just give it to the toddler down the street who could actually use it, right? <laughs> it's ridiculous. I I love this conversation. I feel like we could keep going, but I am going to wrap it up just a little bit. We do want to hear from you at home. Go to speechsciencepodcast.com. Let us know what you have taken away from this or something that we you have that we haven't mentioned. But any closing thoughts on this, guys? And I didn't mean to stop you as you're going off on your barnyard bundle, but like, I, as soon as you said that though, what is that game that everyone talks about? Caribou. 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 Yeah. <laughs> we all know right away. I'm like, every time I see it. Discontinued. A, mm, and, yeah. I, I have yeah. never expensive game. played Caribou. I will never play Caribou. I can't. I mean, okay. If <laughs> yeah, you give it to it. me, that's fine. Don't say but never. Like, I don't know, man. You like, I you if I found it in a thrift shop, I would a... pick it up. I would, I would buy it just for Matt. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I'll buy it just to flip it, y'all. Just, <laughs> just to flip it. Just oh, to do man. nothing and resell it. <laughs> on I the, would buy it for Matt. On just the flip side of the break, we are going to check in with the informed SLP, and then we'll come back with our ASHA spotlight, and then we'll send you all home. You're listening to Speak Science. And now for our regular research review, brought to you by the Informed SLP. The Informed SLP releases a monthly newsletter that brings you plain language reviews of only the newest, most clinically applicable research, keeping you up to date on advances in the field and saving you tons of time. So let's get to it. This is a review of the article, Immediate Effects of Postural Repositioning on Maximum Phonation Duration Tasks in Seated Individuals with Acquired Dysarthria, a pilot study. I want you to think about how you cue a patient on their posture during therapy. For me, it might sound something like, sit up straight, head in line with spine, keep your core engaged and your chest open. After all, we know that good posture improves respiratory support which in turn can optimize vocal performance and speech production. Now, think about those patients who have difficulty with postural control. To help them, maybe you roll up a towel or two in an attempt to bring them into a more upright and symmetrical position. But what more can we do to achieve better posture for our patients? This month, with the help of our OT and PT colleagues, Julian et al. investigated the effect of a novel postural intervention on seated individuals with acquired dysarthria. Prior to speech therapy, the OT or PT would assess and optimize the positioning of the patient using the bow bath concept to achieve a corrected seated posture. 
the individualized postural strategies for each patient were then taught to the SLP for use in subsequent speech therapy sessions. So what does a corrected seated posture look like? Here are some key points to help you visualize it. The back and tailbone are touching the backrest and the thighs are supported in the seat. There is a symmetrical base of support, knees at 90 degrees and heels in contact with the floor. And there's symmetry in the frontal and sagittal plane using cushions, balls, boxes and rolls to stabilize the position. These patients with dysarthria demonstrated improvements in maximum phonation time and respiratory capabilities like thoracic expansion, with no change to EMG activity of the muscles of respiration, meaning this intervention is compensatory rather than restorative. Don't hesitate to phone a friend on this one. Share this article with your OT and PT colleagues and ask if they can correct the seating posture of your patient with dysarthria before their next speech therapy session. Thanks for listening to this review. If you're interested in more, come visit us at www.theinformedslp.com. Tell us how you put the research into practice or find us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter at The Informed SLP. Welcome back to Speed Science. I'm Matt Hot, joined as always by Mike. What's up? Michelle. <laughs> Hi. And our favorite co host of the day, I yell it. Of the day. <laughs> of the day. The only one. The only one of the day. I am so glad you you're on bear the show to say this my week, last by the way. Name. No, Marinovich. <laughs> Did I well say done. it right? Marin- well done. That's right. Beautiful. Ooh, no, I, I went Mike, Michelle. I yell it. I'm sorry. I was trying Matt, to be all you know, fun, I informal. Just to give you. Don't don't give. <laughs> I have a. Uh, I had a fun game to come back to. Now I'm getting beat up. Oh, Michelle, pick a number one rugs. through two fifty. One through what? One through two fifty. Mm, two thirty seven. All right. This is a, from a website called Conversation Starters dot Conversations World dot com. Would you say two what? Thirty seven. Two thirty seven. Michelle, your question. Answer it. Don't think. Just just answer. Mm. I, I don't. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna think. I can't. No, not. no, no, no. Off top of your head, what okay. food do you look forward to at your favorite holiday? Wow. Oh, geez, there's multiple layers to that. Oh, what is my favorite, wow. holiday? favorite food? <laughs> um, ice cream. Awesome. But apple pie. I yell it. Pick a number go. one through two fifty. Okay, eighty-seven. Oh, hang on, Mike. It's a good, it's a good, muted just it's a good number. Eighty-seven. Good, don't think about choice. it. <laughs> don't think about it. Okay. <laughs> What's your initial reaction to reality TV? That. Why? Bachelor. Okay. <laughs> Mike, one through 250. Uh, I just like these. This is, I shall be honest, this is actually a game I play with one of my patients. This uh, is like, not to it's the teach, it's the, we're working on like rate of response. And they want to create this perfect hot seat, Matt. This is like that. What's this website called? Can I clarify my Uh, answer for anyone who loves The Bachelor? Conversation starters world. Yeah. What? What? Please, please. uh, uh, You could talk about your Bachelor thing. Oh, I just. I really just wanted to clarify by saying the rose just makes me Uh, just grosses me out. But no, this is an activity I do with some of my patients that have like. I have a that rate of response. Like the, the physical rose, like it grosses you out. <laughs> Wait, the hold on. I thought it was the process of giving out like, the rose. You just don't like the flower? It's just, just the rose. <laughs> She's I like, like, it's the rose. No, I do, oh, I I do like roses. Completely. But yeah, no, it's the process. It's the okay. process of the like the buildup and the like. The... <laughs> Thank you. No, I appreciate that clarification. I just needed to clarify. I hate roses. No. <laughs> I, 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 no, legit... the like. The like, it's just so, it's like so gendered and it's so like, I'm giving a rose and I have, I don't know, just so But stupid. on The Bachelorette, doesn't she give a rose? I, I haven't watched care. either like, one of those shows, mm-hmm. so I don't know. It just, I, it just like, came up in conversation the other day. We were, uh, a friend of mine were talking that I won't be surprised if at some point there is a gay or a lesbian um, bachelor show. There should be. Really tra- yes, I agree it's because ridiculous. they're really trying to diversify. And yeah. one of the former bachelors apparently just That's came right. out as yeah. gay. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I think 
that's shifting. I, I mean, it's it's a bizarre it concept. Nice. It, I'm yeah. so glad I asked Good. you the reality, reality TV reality question TV. to come back <laughs> out on the break. Yes. <laughs> Mike, before the show goes completely off the rails of why reality TV sucks, pick a number one through 250. Roses, that's the problem. Let's do 129. <laughs> 129. Mike, don't think off top of your head. 129. Which app annoys you? Instagram. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> nice. Fair enough. That's all you get? Fair enough? Matt, I, I, what's your question? Uh, pick a number. You pick a number for me because I'm reading them, so I have a chance to like just pick it. 13. 13. All right, let me scroll mm. up to the top. 13. Uh, where is it at? What is something popular now that annoys you? Hmm. Instagram. Fortnite dancing. Fortnite dancing annoys me. The Bachelor. Just no, no. It's the same reason that <laughs> Mike I, is going to start listing things. No, it annoys me because it's like ice they cream. steal it from creators. They don't Aww, give content no, to yeah, any I, of the creators. Yeah. No, that's a really good point, Matt. Right, and then they yeah. put it into Fortnite, and all these kids are doing it because oh, the Fortnite kid did it. And it's like, no, it was stolen from a creative person. So my background's in in theater. So I'm always towards the the creative type. The artist. Hey Matt. Creator. Yes. Pick a number between one and two fifty. Seventy-three. Okay. Give me a second. Off, off, off the top of your oh. head, dude. Don't think about it. Flipping the table. Okay, 73. Let me find While this. Mike's looking it up, go to our website. Have you noticed we've all picked odd numbers? Com. What are yeah. some strange beliefs that some people have? Strange beliefs that some Oh, flat earth. Okay. <laughs> what? Flat earthers. That is the oh, strange flat belief. Earthers. <laughs> or, yeah, well, oh, yeah. Flat earth is the one that I can't get behind. Like, I just can't understand. The dude with the balloon where he's like, it hit the ceiling of the earth. And I was like, what? That, that's what? Your balloon no. hit the ceiling of the earth? <laughs> Incorrect. Uh, SpeechSciencePodcast.com. Go to our website. Email or phone call 614-681-1798. All right. This part of the show, if we're getting back on track, we're going off the rails. I can't even tell. We always look at the Ashes Spotlight. It's our opportunity to look at something that they're doing right, doing something wrong. We try to throw it out there. And guess what, y'all? Guess what just broke this weekend? What? It is Asha election time. Thank you, Isla. <laughs> and what? I need <laughs> some. I need, you should probably just record that. <laughs> I, what? <laughs> so, uh, so this week I logged in and I hit my vote now button. And guess what? My choices what? are. <laughs> what? Thank you, guys. I so appreciate this. <laughs> Uh, my choices are I approve or I do not approve of the candidates. There is no voting this week. Wow. Yeah. So I think I told you all that I emailed in because mm -hmm. they have a, a link if you have questions or whatnot on the candidates. Because a few episodes ago, we had chatted about how you had noticed Matt and shared with us on the podcast, why are some so many of these positions uncontested and it's an approval versus not approving. I think that's it. You're just voting yes or no. Um, and so they wrote me back. I'll summarize this real quick, but they said, thanks for submitting an election comment because I just asked if they could clarify because um, I was curious how the uh, nominations, the nominees were, were chosen and to have so many unopposed positions. Um, so I must have missed this. I can't say that I read every email from Asha. <laughs> so um, I must have missed where this changed. But uh, Asha's election process changed effective with the 2021 election cycle. So the bylaws, this is resolution BOD, so Board of Directors 9 2020, moved Asha to a hybrid election for the Board of Directors when it was approved by the membership. So apparently we voted, or if you didn't vote, you didn't vote on this. And what year um, did they say that we voted to approve the mm -hmm. unopposed elections? Bylaws moved. To a hybrid election when it was approved by the membership. I don't know when. They did not give me a date. I can write back and ask. So a we usually election... say what Asha does right at this point, but I feel like this is a major misstep, y'all. <laughs> well, let me let me so explain the rest for you. Um, not that it's going to clarify, but hopefully <laughs> we'll see. A hybrid election, so it's a combination of both an uncontested election, the sole candidate 
option, right? With members having one vote to approve or not approve a slate of candidates and B, contested positions with each position having up to three candidates and members electing one of those three candidates. That's what we have previously voted on. And I know I have not voted in every ASHA election, so maybe I missed where this changed. Mm -hmm. uh, the president-elect and all vice president positions are uncontested. So there is one candidate per position and two new board of director positions. So the board member at large in audiology and the board member at large in speech language pathology are contested. So up to three candidates for those positions. This change would this is what I'm just going to read this directly from the email. This change would better ensure diversity representation on the board of directors, as well as the continued posi positioning of well-qualified and experienced individuals in these critical leadership positions. The intent on this transitioning to this new model was to ensure diversity on the board of directors. Unfortunately, what often happened is the committee on nominations and elections submitted diverse slates, but election results tend to favor one gender, one profession, one age group, one race, and one work setting. While the individuals elected have been well qualified for the board of director positions, election results did not yield a diverse body that represent ASHA's membership. The move to a hybrid election would retain several important components of the current election process. The nominations process would continue to be open for all members. The nominees who agree to be considered by completing an application would be vetted and slated by the Committee on Nomination and Elections. There is now a 30 day comment period after the slate is submitted to to the membership for feedback. The members will still vote to approve or not approve the slate of uncontested positions and select one candidate from three of the contested positions. So quick question for the four of us. What, what is the predominant percentage of women in our field? 99. It's 9. over 90%. 90, yeah. 97%. Okay. Uh, it's high. How many, how many females do you think are of the three that speech therapists can vote on? one yeah 33 percent i how is this how is this ensuring a greater diversity in yeah our... also those are white women <laughs> yeah right Agreed. white cisgendered mostly heterosexual women <laughs> sorry the, uh, yeah exactly like you were saying matt the, we're not looking at a diverse oh. force like we're looking at what? We're looking at a man named Bob Robert, and, and and from what I've from what I've seen people post on him, Doctor Augustine is probably like a great leader in our field, and no disrespect towards that. But how is this diversifying the field at all? That's not how you diversify the field. You is don't start their, there. <laughs> is this their answer? Because we only get four percent of yeah. the vote in because they do no broadcasting of it. So we be, you know why it like, uh, this is just, this upsets me more than it really should because. Re really? I don't, I mean, I don't think it's a more than it really should. This is, this is well, representative I mean, of, of, the, of a about. big problem. Mm -hmm. oh, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. Oh, you didn't. I just stopped oh. talking. <laughs> no, it's like <laughs> we get 4% of our field to vote. So instead of saying, how do we figure out to make the 96% that feel disenfranchised the vote in our general yeah. election, because the 4% that vote are most likely probably part of that 97% white cisgendered female. Yeah. So they probably have a, ten we all have a tendency to vote for somebody that either looks like us, talks like us, or represents what we're doing, which is fine when you have 97% of people or 96% of people mm -hmm. voting. Mm -hmm. When you have 4% of people voting, I'm sorry. I just, yeah. as you read that, I was holding my daughter. So I was yeah. trying not to get upset, <laughs> but like, <laughs> I don't get how this is diversifying the field. Mike and I are like rare unicorns that were in the same podcast at the same time. There should be something against having two male SLPs in the same room at the same time in case something happens and our percentages go down. <laughs> but it, there should not be 67% of the election options i guess at this point all male i don't get it in in our mm -hmm. field i don't get it no i i honestly would like to have a longer conversation with someone like this was me writing in saying can someone explain this to me I agree. <laughs> yeah right. i mean That's let, I let's back. just name also that this is for white people having a conversation about of, of course, this of course absolutely <laughs> also we'll just say it out loud right? yeah right. the you you have you have a a huge 
I can't wait to listen to the episode in which, or, or many, I hope many episodes in which you, you guys talk about this. We're, mm-hmm. we're going to beat the drum as much as we can. It just, yeah. I don't know, man. Usually we try to find something positive, but like, this is the biggest thing that now, and like, you know, like, here's, Hey, here's we're, my positive. We're it wrote poster. me back to answer yeah, my question. <laughs> yeah. There, there's something. <laughs> So start. do I check that I approve all candidates or I do not approve all candidates? That's up to you. <laughs> right. But yeah. like, what does it matter? Right. Exactly. But that's, that's the problem. That's right, because the part, they're 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 the week, next week we should have a black female SLP on the show and we can get some opinions on, on, on what's, what's going how on. How about here. you get, how about uh, you more get than more than, than one? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. Cause I don't want to ask one person to represent M- multiple, <laughs> like l- l- let's speak to Everyone. our community. Let's speak to our listeners because this is, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're looking at it at, at, at face value, of course. And it's, it's pretty obvious that the, the glaring issues here that this yeah. is not representative of our field. Let's speak yeah. to the people exactly who it's not representing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we feel yeah, like we, we need, need a to hear. Ooh, <laughs> deep breath. We need to hear. Yeah, from where's our the audience. wine, guys? What? Why can't we? Uh, I've got my bourbon do... up here, but yeah, I got to get up at five in the morning, so I don't know, man. <laughs> you know, normally this is where we do the news headlines, but I feel like our show's gone long enough. So, Miss mm-hmm. Ayala, I want you to to tell us what we should do to find more information about you. Learn with less, learn, le- learn with less podcast and full uh, transparency. I guess we should have done this in the beginning. Mm. Uh, Ayelet and I met when we were down at ASHA and yeah. uh, uh, 2019. 2019. Yeah. yeah, not the 2020 the version day. that didn't happen. <laughs> uh, the last ASHA that we were at. Uh, but uh, you were awesome, came onto the show, <laughs> and we talked a little bit about how you don't hate toys. And uh, so, yeah. So, if people are more interested to find out about learnwithless.com, what is it? Where can they get more information? And what about the podcast? Yeah, you can you can find Learn With Less, uh, the podcast on any podcast cat, pet catcher, anywhere you like to listen to Speech Science. Uh, and you can find me at Learn With Less on Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest and learnwithless.com. Yeah. I, I, Come on over. So I, I, I have to ask you a question. Yeah. So maybe I'm a bad parent on this one. Okay. You always do this. Yeah, <laughs> and you, and you, he does. He, I tell him all the time. He always starts with maybe I'm this. Maybe, maybe I'm, I'm a bad parent. Maybe, maybe I'm a horrible I'm a bad, dad. It's like clearly you're not. <laughs> right. An amazing father. Why don't my kids like to play with their toys like together? Why is it the dir- <laughs> dinosaur toys are played with only dinosaur toys and the Star Wars only Star Wars and the X-Men only X-Men? Because mm. they're kids. <laughs> Why is the Hot Wheels track not being used with the dinosaur? I don't, is there's got to be what am I doing wrong? I mean, do you uh, ever who says do that? you who ever says play wrong? with them? Do you ever play? Do you ever bring over the dinosaur to the Hot Wheels track? No, because if you look on the wall of the toys behind me, I have shelves for each one individually, and the this Ghostbusters might, should might not be, be a... with the X Men. This might be a looking internally thing. Okay, so it might be my fault. Got it. All right. That's all I needed to hear. <laughs> no, I mean, but really, it's it's my, instead of it being your fault, I mean, it can be. It's my like, modeling. You can also model the other way. But right? then it wouldn't look good. Why would good, it because the <laughs> be with the Ghostbusters? <laughs> all right. I just answered my own question. All right. Oh, well, there you go. All right. I mean... Let's let's send this baby home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. What are you looking forward to in the next week? Not therapy related. Mike, what about you? I'm looking forward to the weather. It's supposed to be sunny. It's supposed to be hot. It's supposed to not rain. That's what I'm looking are forward you golfing? to. Are you going to go uh, golfing? I sure hope so. I sure hope so. Nice. I could I could use some practice. <laughs> Michelle, what are you looking forward to this week? Not speech or not therapy related. Uh, also the sunshine and warm weather so getting out for more walks where my son can find sticks and fix holes in the sidewalk Yay. Um, <laughs> but uh, but also very much looking forward to um, two of our friends coming to visit from Colorado who we haven't seen in nice. so long now that um, now that it's a, a our, our group of people are vaccinated wow um, feel safe having, having them come so I'm excited for that that's awesome. I yell it. What are you looking forward to this week? Not therapy related. 
I am looking forward to this new realization that uh, someone, dear friend of mine, clued me in on, which is that um, I can continue on from my last week, which is that if you are starting to run, you don't have to run for like a long period of time. You just walk and then you run for like a short period of time and then you walk again and then you run again for like, you know, a few more seconds and that's a run. I like it. And so I've been doing that and it's great. <laughs> it's wonderful. That's great. It's awesome. Uh, for me, I am attempting to finish dumping 49 more bags of mulch and finishing a back patio before the cicadas happen here oh, in Ohio. Wow. The Brood X 17 year fun cicadas. That's what I'm That's trying to That's huge. Will you, will you post pictures? I will. When they, when they do come when and the also of your come. patio. I am hoping to find the, the rare blue eyed version cicada. It's like a um it's like a white walker yeah right <laughs> no it's like a genetic uh mishap but the like little blue eyed ones will come out wow right so i'm hoping that happens so that is what we are looking forward to hit us up on our website tell us what you are looking forward to speechsciencepodcast.com and from there you can email us speechsciencepodcast at gmail.com uh, a voicemail or a text message 614-681-1798 our Discord, discord.speechsciencepodcast.com uh, and of course, merchandise.speechsciencepodcast.com. Mike, do you have a onesie yet for your baby? A lot of them. With Speech Science on it? No, the Speech Science Podcast. No. Get one. <laughs> I will, Get one. I will, I promise. <laughs> hey, um, I my daughter wore hers today when I met up with Courtney. I so, should, should yeah. play that part just for my Are wife, you? that your daughter wore the Speech Science onesie. Oh, my yeah. daughter wore it once too. Um, she has worn it like four or five times because it's not going to fit soon. So I know, right? Babies grow so fast. Our intro music was Please Listen Carefully by Jazar. It's licensed under an attribution and share like license. Our bump music was the County Fair Rock, copyrighted John Deku. Uh, find all of his music at soundcloud.com slash dirt dog music. The informed SLPs, their music was At the Count by Broke for Free, licensed under a Creative Commons attribution license. And the closing music playing right now the Slow Burn by Kevin McLeod is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution license in the immortal words of Janice Wright, always be a willow. Uh, the oak looks mighty and strong, but in a storm, it will crack and break. The willow will bend and return to form. For fellow willows, Mike McLeod, Michelle Wintering, and I yell it, Ma Ma Marinovich <laughs> did it. I'm Matt Hot. Until next week. So long, everybody. Bye. 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 Awesome. You made it. You survived. Speech Science is edited and produced by MWH Production. Please follow Speech Science on Twitter at Speech Science PC and like our page on Facebook. For more original podcasts, please visit ExceptionalEd.com and rate and subscribe to our podcast anywhere you get your podcasts.